Hey there, I'm Tatum, and today I'm gonna to be going over the Futurebit Apollo BTC full package. I'm gonna be showing you a full setup tutorial and quick start guide on how to get your Futurebit set up. From there, we will look at the interface and go over a few things and get you started with the Apollo BTC. What the Apollo BTC is, is a minor node and desktop computer. It's a really cool all-in-one desktop device that uh, allows you to get kind of the entire Bitcoin ecosystem right on your desk. So just some quick specs. At the core of it is a single board computer with six cores running at two gigahertz. Uh, it also comes with four gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and an M2 slot with a uh, included one terabyte SSD. It also comes with 44 ASIC chips that will run at a maximum 3.5 terahash uh, and the power draw is only maxing out at about 200 watts as well. It's very compact, low hash rate, low power draw, it's very quiet as well. Let's get started and show you how to set it up. So this is actually what comes in the box. It's the Futurebit itself, the provided power supply and a power cord. So let's get started and start getting things hooked up. First, I'm just gonna plug everything into the actual future bit before we supply power. And I'm just gonna take my keyboard and my mouse and put them in the two USB three slots. And like I said, I'm gonna be setting this one up over ethernet. So I'm gonna plug that in right here. Then I'm gonna take my HDMI cord and plug it into the side right here. Then we're gonna turn it back around and plug in the power connectors on the back. Uh, I do not have power going to the power supply right now, just as a safety precaution. Very simple, make sure that the clips are on the bottom side, lining up with the uh, connectors. And with that, we are good to go with plugging things into the actual Futurebit machine. And now all we need to do is get some power. There is an on off switch on the provided power supply. Just make sure that that's off before you actually plug it into the wall, uh, just so you can avoid any hazards. And also it will just make the installation a little easier knowing what to expect. So you don't have any false fires or anything like that. Uh, and I'm gonna plug in the power to the power supply, set it down, and then we will get power from the wall. So we now have power from the wall and I also have power going to my monitor. One tip that they include is to make sure that your monitor is on and in the right source, just to be sure that it detects the device and you don't miss anything. So I'm going to reach back here and turn the power supply switch on and we should hear it fire up. So it's going to be a little loud up front. That's just it booting up. And there's an LED indicator that you can watch for right there. And it will be blinking red. That does not mean anything is wrong. As you can see, we have signal. Um, but it's gonna take a little bit to boot up. Uh, it took uh, about five or so minutes max. Um, but the fans will stop. It's not a big deal at all. Uh, but once you see this, you should be good to go. You're not going to miss anything, um, but the default password is futurebit123. So the first thing that you see on boot, it will automatically launch Firefox and go to your dashboard, which is just the local host. And this is where you can start to access it from your local network elsewhere just by finding the IP address. Uh, you can either go into your local networks gateway and find that IP address. The host name should be, I think it's just Futurebit, uh, or you can use an IP scanner and find it that way as well. Um, but everything you need is right on the desktop. So uh, let's take a look here. So as you can see here, like I said, this is the dashboard. It shows everything that you need to know right off. And you can see that the blockchain has been synced uh, to about 574,000 blocks. This has already been syncing uh, previously. So it, of course, will take a couple of days uh, as it usually does to sync a full node. 
but you have some nice stats over here just on the general dashboard. And if we explore a little more, we can go to Minor. And from here, we can see our hash rate and uh, also the power draw, which like you see, I'm at about just over two terahash and only 120 watts. And it also shows you the hardware errors and uptime of the actual miner. And given that this only maxes out at about three and a half terahash, the pool that you decide to connect to needs to be well researched, but it really doesn't matter all that much what you do. Just do your research into the pool configuration that you're choosing. If you want to change pools, you can come down here to the pools tab and then you can put the stratum and the username and password of whatever pool it is that you are using. It changes per pool. Continuing on with the minor part of it, in the settings tab, which is right above the pools tab, you have these settings for the performance that the minor should function at. It defaults to eco, which is the lowest power draw, but also the lowest hash rate. And there's also a balanced, which does increase both of those aspects, and then a turbo, which greatly maxes out the performance of it. You can also customize how the miner performs on a more intricate level. And at the bottom here of this first page, we see the uh, fan speed, which it defaults to auto, but you can change that as well. Before I go any further on the settings, let's go to the node dashboard and show you what that interface looks like. So going down, you see node settings where you can enable Tor and you also see your, your RPC password uh, to connect directly to this node. And you can also add additional config lines as well. Further down, you also see where you can enable the Wi-Fi and you can also do this directly from the system OS. And you also have uh, your basic settings on changing your password, customization on the layout, and then you can also get backups, you can restore from backup, or format your SSD. And the last tab on the sidebar is system, and that is just your shutdown and reboot function. So it's pretty basic. Uh, I would always recommend shutting down through the user interface before you take out any power, considering that this is more than just an ASIC, it is uh, also a computer and a node. And then let's go ahead and close out of this. And as you can see, it's a full Linux Ubuntu um, operating system. And you can download any Bitcoin specific applications to run with this. It runs almost any Linux based application. And it's just a really cool all in one device. And I think it's really cool that you have this much capability with just a little box on the desk. So that was a quick start guide to the FutureBit Apollo BTC full package. For more information on the actual OS and what you can do with it, head over to futurebit.io. Really impressed with this product, really excited to see what else comes from FutureBit. But that's about it for right now. Thanks for watching.